Today let's talk about left and right user interface. And let's start with left user interface. Under options controls you can set any key you like to open left and right user interface and if you didn't do that, please do so. Because you will be using left and right user interface a lot. And first up is navigation. Here you can see information about your location, access galaxy and system map. Galaxy and system map also can be set under options controls to whatever key you like. Here you can also open galactic powers window. On the right you can see all navigation targets. So this is star, this is planet, station. You can distinct stations from outposts here as well. Resource extraction sites, low intensity, high intensity, hazardous resource extraction sites. These are asteroid belts. But if you want to mine or bounty hunt, use resource extraction sites instead. Especially if you are bounty hunting because there are much more wanted NPCs. And these are hyperjump destinations, so these are other systems. They are sorted by distance. If you have great jump range, you will not see all destinations here, you will have to go to galaxy map. You can also see all local navigation targets in system map. With all information that you would need. You can click on any and select it, and you will have it selected in your HUD. And if there are stations, you can see right away. On the left, station's name, industrial refinery economy, faction, government, allegiance, state, expansion, relationship, facilities. So you don't need to guess if there is shipyard or outfitting or black market. Check out this tab and you will see. Also, you can see economies, imports, exports and which goods are illegal, slaves and toxic waste. So you can target any navigation object from system map or from your left user interface navigation tab. Next tab is transactions. Here you can see fines that you received, bounties, claims, bounty claims. These are bounty watchers you receive after killing wanted ships. So if you receive a bounty that's higher than 7000, you will not be able to pay it off up until the timer runs out, usually it's 7 days. And if you don't pay off your fines right away, they will become bounties. So in example, after 2 days, 17 hours, 20 minutes, this one will become a bounty on me. And then after 7 days, like this one is 14 hours left only, it will become a legacy fine, so it will disappear. But don't be fooled, if you spawn at station where this faction is, you will have to pay all bounties and legacy fines at your ship's insurance screen right away. Legacy fines are not shown under transactions, but they are still in the game. You can pay them off if you visit correct station. Here you also will see power play points, trade dividends, combat bonds, so all money transactions are here. Under context you can see station if there is any in egress docking if you target it, local authority vessels, anyway, all ships, stations, high and low energy wakes you can see here. High energy wake means hyperjump destination. You need a frameship drive wake scanner to scan it and find out where the ship has gone. So under context you will see all ships, stations and frameship drive wakes. You can also select any target here. Let me target the ship scan it. I'll perform basic scan. I just need to keep it in my field of view for some seconds. First of all I can see type, rank, hull, shield, faction, bounty and sub-targets. I can see what modules and weapons targeted ship has. You don't need any module for that. Just target any ship, wait for basic scan to perform, keep it in your field of view and you will see it. And you can target any sub-system let me scan the ship. And you can target any subsystem, example cargo scanner and you can see that 100%. And cargo, you need cargo scanner to scan target. It takes 10 seconds to scan target. And then you will see cargo bay contents here. Let's move to right user interface. Here you can see your commander's name, combat trade rank, explorer rank and progress to next rank. Balance, your credit balance. Don't ask me about credit balance, I just made a video what's most profitable in Elite Dangerous now, so watch that video and you will know what is best and how to earn money. 
Rebuy cost is what you will pay when you lose your ship. So never fly around if you can't afford insurance. Or you will lose all modules and all weapons you have on your ship, including your ship. Local bounty, local reputation. If you are pledged to any power, you will see it here. Also, all major factions. Reputation is major factions and rank. And reputation is minor factions. Their allegiance and blah blah blah. If you click on any, you will see more information on any faction. Finance status. Balance. Combat, crime, smuggling. All information is here. Under modules, you can see your modules. And this also is very important screen because you can set your priorities, right? Priority 1 is highest, so modules is priority 1 will be shut down the last if you don't have enough power. Modules is priority 5 will be shut down first. So if I don't have power, fuel scoop cargo hash will be turned off. Then frame should drive. This is very useful if you don't have enough power or you use ships like Ferdinand's or Vulture which have big problems with power, just not enough power. And the key here is to understand that you have different modules that you will use in different flight modes. In example, fuel scoop you will never use in combat and it's 3%. Cargo hatch you don't care in combat, so it's 5% already. Frame should drive you also can't use with your hard points deployed, so only when hard points are retracted. So you can have a two groups of modules. One group you will use only in combat, second group you will use only in super cruise. And you can also manipulate with some modules, in example you can use your shield cell banks only when hard points are retracted. And that way you can have much much more than 100% of power usage. But you can use only 100% at any given time. If you have auto field maintenance unit, you can repair any module here. Any module but power plant. Power plant can only be repaired by ship's reboot repair function. You can disable any module as well if you don't need it. So if you don't have enough power, just play with priorities and remember that priority 1 is the highest. Next tab is fire groups. I don't have any weapons. This is my mission python. But you can make 8 fire groups total. And in any fire group you can have primary and secondary weapon groups. Just click on any new and it will be created. To delete a fire group just delete all weapons and it will disappear. Usually you split thermic and kinetic weapons between those weapon groups. Under cargo tab you can see your cargo bay contents if you have any. On the left if you have refinery module, in example you are mining asteroids, you can manage it here. On the bottom you can see capacity. I have one ton from 248. By clicking on any commodity, cargo hatch is off, enable it to eject. You see, I disabled cargo hatch and I can't eject. But for some reason, if you turn off cargo hatch, you can still trade when you are docked at station. NPCs don't care if you have cargo hatch on or off. So if you have cargo hatch on, you can jettison or abandon. Jettison will mark your cargo as stolen, abandon will mark it as not stolen. So if you giving cargo to your friend, abandon it. If you just want to get rid of cargo, you don't care. Let me abandon one ton. I don't have any cargo anymore. Now let's move to last tab called functions. On the left you can see your jump range, maximum jump range in parentheses, your ship's name. And on the right you can see faction. It's used for combat, conflict zones, so if you are at conflict zone you can pick faction to fight for. You can retract, deploy landing gear or cargo scoop. You can set your wing beacon on or off. If you are in a wing and you want other wing members to nav lock on you and use your frame should drive wake, you set your wing beacon on. Silent running, ship lights, flight assist, rotational correction. These all, except beacon, can be set under options control to specific keys. So if you use something often, set a key. If you don't use often, you can use through user interface. Rotational correction is correction for station's rotation. So if you turn it off, you will have to manually rotate when you are inside station to compensate. Turret weapon mode, forward fire, I don't have any turret so I can't select any other 
Pre-flight checks is what happens when you dock at station. If you have it on and you want to undock, you will see a window requesting you to enter different keys that you have set for pitch, your overall and other input. So it's just a basic test for your controls. You can set report crimes against me on or off, turn off orbit lines, interface brightness, if you don't like so bright, gun sight mode, trailing leading. I use trailing because then I can use thermic weapons and kinetic weapons at the same time. Leading means that you will have aiming reticle in front of enemy ship's movement. So if it's a small ship and it moves fast and it's very close to you, you will see aiming reticle but ship will still be out of your field of view and you will not be able to fire your thermic weapons because for thermic weapons you need to see enemy. Sensor scale type, logarithmic and linear. You see on your sensors there are circles and logarithmic means that distance between the edges are greater than in center of these sensors. Linear means that the distance is same in center or at the edges of these sensors. Reboot repair, if you have any module at 0%, you can reboot your ship and cannibalize some percentage from other modules. And from 1.4 update, it also works regarding power plants. So if you have power plant at 0% health, you can repair, reboot your ship and you will have several percent health for your power plant and you can still power all your modules. Self-destruct is exactly what it says, self-destructing your ship. Now you know about user interface, fly safe, commanders.